Well, hello, my name is Christopher Scott and I'm the small groups pastor at a local church. And in this video, I'm going to walk with you, uh, talk with you about how to use the Warren Wearsby Bible study guides in a small group setting to study the gospel of Mark. So in this video, I'm going to tell you how to use the Bible study guide. Then I'm going to tell you how to format a small group in general. And then I'm going to give you a five minute introduction to the gospel of Mark. So let's go ahead and get started. So how the group uses the book. The Warren Wiersbe Bible Study Series are probably my favorite Bible study series for going through books of the Bible. They're very detailed, very specific, uh, very in-depth, and they're organized into five different areas. The first area is the getting started. Usually these are two questions that you start out the lesson with where you just simply make some observations of the text. What do I see? What's happening? What's going on? It just helps people to kind of wrestle with the text, right? So that's the getting started section. Then there's the going deeper section, which is usually seven or eight questions. This is where the bulk and the meat of your lesson is going to be when using these guides, right? You're going to study the passage more in depth. You're going to use the commentary. They'll put some commentary elements into the workbook that you can read. Uh, Where's will take you to other parts of scripture to read those to help you interpret what's going on. That's the going deeper section. Then the next section is the looking inward section, and that's where you're going to start to think internally about you, what you've read and studied. How have you related to this in the past? What's going on inside your heart? What are you thinking as you read this? That's the learning, looking inward section. And then the fourth section is the going forward section, which is usually one or two questions where you specifically choose a few things to do to apply what you have learned, right? So based on what I've studied, I'm going to do this going forward. That's the going forward section. And then the last section is the seeking help section, which isn't really a question. It's where you, as a participant, write out a prayer asking for God and the Holy Spirit to help you live out what you have learned. The Warren Wearsby Bible Study Guides usually are eight lessons, which is this one. It's eight lessons on the Gospel of Mark. And then there's a ninth lesson, which is shorter, a bonus lesson you can do to kind of summarize everything you've read in the book. So I'm going to put a link to this um, Bible study guide in the, in the information below, as well as the commentary that goes alongside with it that helps the facilitator to be prepared and ready to facilitate a discussion. So that's how to use the Warren Wearsby Bible study guide and commentary in a small group setting. Next, I want to talk to you about how to format your small group. At our church, uh, my senior pastor has taught me to format our small groups with like three basic elements. You can add other things to it, but every, every small group needs to have these three elements. Number one, you want to start the small group with what we call is the unifying question. And that's where the facilitator starts out the group by saying, what did you all learn? What did you all take away? What did you all hear in the message over the weekend at church? And we start our groups with that question because we always want our small groups to complement what's going on at church on the weekend. We don't want it to replace, right? So we want people to be involved in big church on the weekend in a service to attend and serve. And we also want them to be in a small group where they can actively grow and serve each other, right? So we, we do that by asking the unifying question. What did you learn over the weekend in the message? What stood out to you? Things like that. Next, you're going to want to just simply read the text of the passage, right? So for the Gospel of Mark, let's look at one of the lessons here. The Where's Be Guide on Mark. Lesson 4, Unbelief, Chapter 6. So you're going to have somebody in the group that you know is a good reader read Chapter 6, or you as a facilitator can read it, or you can pull it up on your phone on the YouVersion Bible app and have the YouVersion Bible app read it if you want, whatever you want to do. So start with the unifying question, read the text all the way through, and then third, you're going to walk people through the questions, right? And as a facilitator, you need to have spent a little time with the questions to kind of know what's coming up, what's going on. And your job is to facilitate and guide the discussion through the questions, right? So uh, walk them through the questions, keep the group on track. You know, my, I always kind of joke, you can talk about anything you want in group as long as it's related to the topic in the book, right? I kind of goof around with them because it's easy for groups to get on rabbit trails and talk about whatever they want to talk about instead of what's in the passage. So with that, I think it's good, you know, usually to remind your group, this week we're going to be on this lesson, this week we're going to be on this lesson, that way it kind of keeps them cued in. We need to keep ourselves moving through the book because it's easy to get sidetracked and not go through the questions. So that's how to format a small group. Number one, the unifying question. Number two, read the text all the way through. Number three, walk through the questions. And if your group has trouble covering the whole lesson in one week, that's okay. Split it up into two or maybe just do the 
odd questions one week and then the even questions the next week. You know, whatever you want to do or however you want to customize it. So I've told you how the group uses this book, the Wearsby Bible Study Guide. I've told you how to format your small group. Now I want to give you a brief five-minute introduction to the Gospel of Mark, right? So I'm going to talk about the author, the audience, an outline of the book of Mark, the key verse, the date of the book, and the key theme of the book. So first, let's talk about the author. The Gospel of Mark was obviously written by the man Mark. And in the Gospels, there's four Gospels in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Yet only two of those Gospels were written by disciples of Jesus and eyewitnesses of Jesus. That was Matthew and John, the two bookends. So Mark and Luke were not necessarily eyewitnesses of Jesus. They got their material from Peter and Paul. Okay, so... And in Mark's case, the Gospel of Mark is likely a summary of Peter's sermons about Jesus, you know, what Peter said about Jesus, okay? The audience the book is written to, the Gospel of Mark likely is written to a non-Jewish audience or a Gentile audience or a Roman audience, however you want to define it. But basically, they were not Jews. They didn't have a Jewish heritage. They didn't know the Old Testament. And we know that because there's parts in the, uh, the Gospel of Mark where where Mark will explain certain Jewish customs or Jewish rituals or even Jewish terms, right? And he does that in Mark 7, verses 3 through 4, and in Mark 14, 12, where he will, he's going along saying this, and then there's a little parentheses where he'll explain what the festival of unleavened bread is, or he'll explain why the Pharisees wash their hands, things like that. I mean, it kind of gives us the sense that Mark was likely writing his gospel for people that didn't know much about the Old Testament law, or about Judaism. The Gospel of Mark, the date of the book was likely 55 to 65 AD, so about 20 to 30 years after Jesus' death, somewhere in there. Most people will say it was the first gospel written out of the four, but it was not the first New Testament book written. Uh, the book of Galatians was written probably in 49 AD, and so uh, the Gospel of Mark was written after that. An outline of the book, which I, I'm taken from Warren Wearsby's uh, New Testament commentary, on Mark, be diligent, serving others as you walk with the master servant. He he organizes the book geographically, which I've never seen before, but I like. So the first 13 verses of chapter 1 kind of gives the presentation of the servant, Jesus. Who is he? Where did he come from? How did he come on the scene? Then chapters 1 through 9 talk about Jesus's ministry in Galilee. Then chapter 10 talks about Jesus' journey to Jerusalem. And then chapters 11 through 16 talk about Jesus' ministry in Jerusalem, right? So that's how Wearsby outlines the book. If there's a key verse in the entire Gospel of Mark, it is Mark 10, 25, which is a well-known verse. It says, I almost have it memorized, but for the sake of clarity, I'm just going to read it. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. That's the, the key verse of the book, is that Jesus came not to be served as king, but to serve others by giving his life as a ransom, as a substitute, on, and to take the punishment for our sins so that we could be counted as righteous in God's eyes. The theme in the Gospel, Mark, is that Jesus Christ is the servant, that I hope, uh, I hope you can kind of see Jesus Christ is the servant based on this introduction. So if you're interested in doing a small group Bible study, I highly suggest the Warren Wearsby Bible Study Guide and the accompanying commentary that goes along with it. I'll put links in the description below. And uh, if you click on those links and buy anything at Amazon, I get a small percentage um, as a uh, affiliate income. So thanks for watching. Hope to catch you again in another video. If you haven't already subscribed, I suggest subscribe up here. If you want to look at other uh, books of the Bible, introductions to books of the Bible, and how to use the Warren Wearsby Bible Study Guides, that's up there. If you want to become a patron supporter and support my YouTube channel, you can do that down here. Thanks again and hope to catch you again on another video.